Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Mordian Glory video and in today's episode I want to ask and attempt to answer one simple question. How important is it to have the right models in your army? How strict is WYSIWYG these days? What you see is what you get. Now this video was prompted by a recent experience that I had online with some of the responses that came to the content that I was putting out. I did a video where I was talking about my experience running pure infantry guard at a tournament and that was a really fun video, I had a great time, I went undefeated, I took on Dark Angels, I took on Chaos Knights and I swept up before we drive them and all that kind of good stuff and if you like the sound of that video by the way I'll make sure to link it at the end of this one. But as part of that video, I also did another video where I talked about my army list and I took people through exactly what I was running because there was 251 models and I wanted people to be able to get the fine nitty gritty detail. And between this sort of two part series that I did, I had a lot of very positive comments, people saying that they loved the idea of the army. But one thing that came up consistently and it was from, I would say, a small yet very vocal group of people and it wasn't the same people on each video it was it was coming from different places people were saying that you should have had the right models in your army and what they were getting at is in my army list i had several different types of infantry data sheet i had some infantry squads i had some death corps krieg and i had some catachans and rather than having Katachan models and having Krieg models and having my infantry squads all painted in different color schemes and using the precise GW Krieg models and using the exact ancient muscle men Katachan models, I just had my Mordians. Now, many of these Mordians were converted uh, old school Cadians. I'd done a head swap on them. A lot of them were also the original metal models as well. But what people were saying is, I shouldn't have had just converted infantry to represent the different kinds of squad. Because I had men with berets and men with caps and all this kind of stuff just mixed together. And the only way that you could really differentiate the squads was the, sort of the equipment they were running and the movement trays they were on. Because they were just my audience, the same models that I've spent ages building and restoring and painting and bringing together in this sort of cohesive color scheme. And so what people were saying is you should have had Krieg models. The Death Corps Krieg, the gas models that GW makes, the veteran guys, and those should have been your Krieg models. Using your converted Mordians was not appropriate. Having them in all the same color scheme was not appropriate. Because how was your opponent meant to differentiate between the different ones? And even if your opponent could differentiate, it's not right that you're using non-Krieg models to represent Kriegers. It's not right that you're using non Katachan models to represent Katachans. And this is honestly the first time that I've ever encountered this kind of feedback. Interestingly, over the last 10 years of playing 40k, and especially the last five years as I've been doing my great Mordian restoration project and I've been bringing my arm together and making it all a homogenous color scheme so everything matches together. The feedback that I've had consistently when I've done these sort of taunt reports and I've done battle reports has been your army should all be in the same color scheme and your models should all be part of the same regiment. So that's why I meant to I went to great lengths to make sure that when I converted my Acadians over to Mordians that I went to Amble Industries, I got all the head swaps, I used uh, Scion Berry heads as well. I went to a lot of effort to bring all of these different disparate models and regiments together that make up my collection. I've got some old school Mordians, some old school Cadians, I've even got some like for Hallands and other bits and bobs in there. I've got some of the last chances, I've got some of the old Cadians, I've got some of the new Cadians. I've got all these different bits coming together. And I took a lot of effort to make sure that they all could fly under the same banner and it didn't look like a random hodgepodge eclectic mix. It looked like a cohesive fighting force. And there's just a, a few variances in the models to make them look a bit more interesting. It wasn't the same five poses of Cadians over and over again, right? And the feedback that I've had for the last 10 years has been, that's good. Keep making your army more consistent. We don't like seeing it when you do a battle port and you've got like tan tanks and green infantry or green infant or green tanks and tan infantry. We don't like that. We want to see everything looking cohesive under one color scheme. And yet, 
in the last, I would say, 12 months with this particular series of videos being the, the pinnacle of this, the feedback that I've started to have instead has been, no, not everything should be the same model. A man with a LAS rifle isn't just a man with a LAS rifle. A Krieger should be represented by a Krieg model and a Katachan should be represented by a Katachan model and so on and so forth. And I found that really interesting. And the comments that I were getting, no one was being mean, no one was being horrible, but they were definitely strong comments. People that felt uh, very strongly about what they were putting, how they felt like it was the right thing, it was righteous and there was conviction. They, No one was mean, everyone was respectful, but there was this general sense of, you were using the wrong models. And I had people saying, like, oh, I didn't know they allowed proxies at tournaments and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, wait, hang on. This isn't a proxy. This is a Garsman with a LAS rifle. Surely he can be a Krieger one day and he can be a catcher on the next day, as I, the hobbyist, need him to be. And I, you know, respond to a few of these comments and I raised the point on a few live streams and a few videos. And again, the, the feedback I tend to have had has been, no, you need the right models. Otherwise, you're proxying. Now, what's interesting is I am someone who is very much against proxies. And I just want to be clear as well. One thing I want to mention before I move on, I actually fully respect that opinion. If that's the way that those people want to play, be super precise. I also understand that was somewhat in the context of like a tournament video and how having the right models at tournaments is important. Like, I get that. This is not a video of me lambasting those people. I appreciate all the comments I get, especially those that disagree with me because they prompt me to think and, hey, we're getting this video out of it, which we'll get to enjoy. So it's all good stuff. So please disagree with me as much as you like. Just let's get that squared away, okay? But going back to what I was saying is what I found recently is a shift in the community where people are being much stricter on what the definition of a proxy is. A Marine with a bolter isn't just a Marine with a bolter anymore. A man with a rifle isn't just a man with a rifle. You have to have the right models to represent the exact data sheet that you're trying to represent here. And I find that fascinating. And I was curious about what might have caused this shift. Why have opinions changed quite radically in the last 12 months and have they actually changed or is this just a vocal minority speaking about it but most people still think that well Morden if you want to run your guys as cat chance one day and as Kriegers the next that's okay I think this has come about though if I was to posit a theory and put this forward to you guys and let you and you guys can let me know what you think about this I think this has come about since the loss of fixed regiments in the guard i don't know if this is something we're seeing quite as much in other communities but in the guard it definitely seems to be something that is popping up a lot attention guardsmen this is an announcement by the departmento munitorum element games is an official sponsor of the modern glory channel they offer up to 20 percent off warhammer 40k and 10 percent off full action and other game systems use the link down in the description to save money and support the channel Anyone not using the link will be referred to the local commissariat. Also, don't forget that if you use referral code TIM3921, then you will receive double store credit, saving even more money on your future purchases. That's all for now. Format! And it seems when we had the 8th edition codex, and you had fixed regiments like Mordians, Catachans, Talan, Steel Legion, all those ones, you had a fixed regiment and you had this overarching trait, this umbrella that sat above your army. And then it was kind of like you just put the regiment, you put the models in that you want. It doesn't really matter because everyone knows, okay, what's your overarching doctrine? Oh, you're using Mordians today. Oh, you're using the Cadians today. And we've lost that now. That went away at the end of the 8th edition book. And in the 9th edition book, we had these armies that were basically all custom regimental doctrines. People were running born soldiers, obviously, competitively, but everywhere else, people were like, okay, I'm going to take some parade drill and some grim demeanor and some expert bombardiers. I'm going to take what I want to represent my dudes. But in that ninth edition book, we also had those separate data sheets, like the Krieg, like the Katachans, like the Canes. An infantry squad was no longer just an infantry squad. Infantry squad represents something very specific. And there were other kinds of infantry you could get, like your Kriegers and stuff. And they were now separate and distinct, and they had their own models. But 
you still had a lot of people that were like, well, my regimental doctrines, these custom ones that I'm picking on this list, they mention Mordians, so I'm going to pick those ones that are going to represent the Mordians best overall. But now that we're in 10th edition, and we're another three months down the line, and we're probably between the 9th edition guard book and the 10th edition guard book, we're probably about eight or nine months into this potentially regiment agnostic situation. What I'm seeing is people no longer putting everything under the umbrella of one regiment. It's no longer a case of, I collect Mordians and I've got different kinds of trooper in my army and I'm just happening to use this particular data sheet to represent my assault infantry or my defense infantry. Now it's like, no, I don't collect a specific regiment. What I'm collecting is the Imperial Guard. I'm collecting the Ashton and Atarum. And within my force, I have these units from other regiments that are coming together. And rather than collecting one group of your dudes, what seems to be the case is people are now looking at the guard and they're looking at the faction and they're like, I collect the guard and this is made up of a collective mix of different armies that are fighting together. Now on the one hand, that's kind of cool because it lets you take a little bit of Krieg and a little bit of Acadia, a little bit of Katja and a little bit of Infantry Squad and you feel like you can have a different mix and you can dip your toes in different things and one day if you feel like painting colour schemes in a certain way you can do it and the next day you feel like you paint them with blues and greens, brilliant, you can do that. But I do think that a lot of flavour is being lost. I think if you look at where we were just less than a year ago when you had all the flavor of the 8th edition book. And, and the 8th edition book wasn't fit for purpose. Like, let's just be clear about something here. I'm not asking to get the 8th edition book back. It was a faithful companion for five years, but it wasn't fit for purpose by the end of its tenure. And it was held together with spit and string. And whilst there was lots of potential flavor, there was basically one or two ways to actually run the army. But in terms of like the lore and the fluff and the feeling of making your dudes and the feeling of having the regiment be your homebrew regiment of guys that was much stronger there between the original uh, eighth edition codex the psychic awakening the custom regiment psychic awakening, I should say vigilus defiant and also you had the scions uh, regiments at psychic awakening and then you had the cadian supplement supplement as well you had all of these different factors that went into the melting pot that really allowed you to create something that was your dudes and now i feel like we've lost that and the flavor has come down a little bit and now people don't see themselves collecting a single regiment newer players are now seeing themselves just collecting the guard and one of the big questions that i actually get and I, this has been bubbling in the background especially with a lot of like live streams and stuff when people have been like sending me lists in to review on the live streams um, people have been like, okay, I know that the Cadians are, uh, that the Kachan, sorry, I know that the Kriegers are the best infantry, but I only own Cadians, or I only own Kachan models. So that's why I've used their data sheets. And I've had to like say to these people, oh, well, if you have infantry with rifles and grenade launchers and plasma, you, you use them however you want. They're your dudes, mate. You, if you want to use them as Kriegers. And a lot of these newer players are like, oh, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. No, if it's a if it's a Cadian model, surely I have to use the Cadian data sheet, and that's a really strange concept to me as someone who's been in the game for a long time. But actually taking a step back and looking at it from their perspective, I kind of get it. GW has said this particular box of models that you're buying isn't a generic box of guardsmen now. This is the Cadian shop troopers, and this is the data sheet you need to use to represent them. And if you've got a Cadian command squad that's on a slightly different base size and comes, with this, and comes with a different kind of loadout, then that's different to a platoon command squad. So you have to use it as a Cadian command squad. And I've just started noticing a lot of people are no longer seeing guard as a man with a rifle is a man with a rifle. They're now seeing this is a specific kind of regiment and this is a specific data sheet. And so the direct impact of that has been people I feel limiting themselves a lot more rather than being able to go out there and be like, okay, I'm going to buy some third party infantry and I'm going to go into buy war games Atlantic, or I'm going to buy Amble industry or something like that. And I'm, I'm going to 3d print something and I'm going to have the 
models that I want to represent whatever regiment I'm building. People aren't really doing that as much. Instead, they go, no, no, I have to have the GW Kriegers. I have to have the GW Cadians. Because if I don't have the exact models, I might not be able to run it at a tournament. I might not be able to use it in my local games because my friends m might say that I'm proxying stuff and you can't prox stuff in 40k. And so I, I've noticed this and I was just wondering what you guys think. Have you noticed a similar uptick? I feel like there's quite a big divide in the community right now where you've got people that are absolutely anti-GW and who aren't buying anything Games Workshop related and they're just 3D printing or recasting or kit bashing or third party modeling and they're part of the old school camp. They're part of a similar sort of mindset that I would say I'm in where a man with a rifle is a man with a rifle, doesn't really matter. And then you've got the newer players that are coming in with 9th edition uh, guard codex and now with 10th edition as well and those people are like, oh no. Oh no, 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 like I, I have to have the right models. And there's this split in the community and for me, I've definitely noticed that both online and I've noticed it in real life as well. But have you guys noticed that where you are? Or is this maybe just newer players that are getting a little bit confused and they're not quite certain about the rules of what they can and can't run? Also, obviously, I'm doing this from a guard perspective, but are there other factions out there that maybe are going through something similar? Is an orc boy an orc boy? Or is an orc boy separate to a beast snagger? Is a space marine with a bolt pistol and a chainsaw, does that have to be like an intercessor? Or can that be like an assault intercessor? Or that can, can that be, do I have to buy, a better example I would, I would say is, if I'm running Death Watch, do I have to buy the exact Death Watch models? Or can I get a bunch of regular marines that might be a bit cheaper and just paint them up and give them a silver shoulder pad? Is that still okay now, or would people consider that to be proxying? And also, not only we talk about models here, but what about paint schemes? If you're running a particular sort of chapter, but you want to have some of those marines which are normally associated with like being sneaky, and they're your, more, your infiltrators, your phobos speeds, things that are normally associated with being raven guard, do they need to be painted in dark colors now? And then your line infantry should be painted as like ultramarines or with marines is a little bit different where no we don't have separate chapter data sheets so we don't need separate chapter color schemes what do you guys think let me know down in that comment section below because of course all of this is just like my opinion this is just my perspective and i am but one person living in a small bubble so it'd be great for me to know your perspectives. Have you seen people becoming stricter with WYSIWYG? Or is this maybe just a small phenomenon as newer players are coming into the game and they're starting to try and understand what they can and can't build and paint and where the line on proxy is and counts as is as well. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is your lucky day. And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and patrons. You guys are amazing. Truly the lifeblood of the channel. I could not do Mordian Glory full time without the incredible and generous support of my members. So thank you guys so much. And last, but certainly not least, 
I want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier Patreons. These are the war masters, the people who have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty. So a massive thank you to Bon Bon Vert, Mad Larkin, Mark Panconi, RJ Scorpion, Swordfish Trombone, John Stubbs, Nick Walsh, Diesel Fox, August Vardy, and the Tommies. Thank you guys, your incredible support makes a huge difference and it is a big part of how I'm able to do Mordian Glory full time. But that's all for now, thank you for watching and of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.